from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Jose de Medeiros. This Mass is offered in memory of Jose, Maria, and Elizabeth de Medeiros. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet nor a prophet's son. But I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. 
The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. And ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was in Christ to reconcile the world to Himself. The good news of reconciliation he has entrusted to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came into his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, this man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralyzed man, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. As a priest and a pastor, I am continually reminded of the many burdens that people bear in this life. The emotional scars, the painful memories, the gut-wrenching guilt and feelings of regret that are often emotionally paralyzing. Sometimes the stories I hear are staggering. There are so many people in this world who need to be forgiven for what they have done or need to be forgiving someone else for what was done to them. Forgiveness comes before healing. That's why in our New Testament story this morning, Jesus first says to the paralyzed man, my son, your sins are forgiven. Then he says, rise up and walk. Forgiveness is the foundation of healing, while the lack of forgiveness means continued suffering and brokenness. Now you can see the need for this everywhere around you. It's in the person whose soul is troubled by some misdeed of long ago. He or she is racked by regret and governed by guilt. They are never completely happy, even when everything seems to be right in their life, because the memory of that past mistake, that past sin, is always there. 
hanging over them like a dark cloud, blotting out the sun. It is truly tragic. Some people like that impose a lifetime of suffering on themselves and are never healed because they can't accept God's forgiveness of their sins. You can see the need for forgiveness in homes and families where people of the same flesh and blood hardly stand to be with one another in the same room. Every offhand remark, every look of the eye, every tone of a voice dredges up grievances which have been accumulating for years. These families imprison each other in a living hell, and they will never escape unless as a family they can find a way to forgive and forget. You can see it in parish communities when disputes arise and factions form, when things are done and said by one another and the memory of it lingers on. The people in such parishes share the same worship space on Sunday morning, but they don't share in the fellowships of Christ anymore. Slowly the church is robbed of its vitality. Its spirit is strangled until these sisters and brothers in Christ can learn to forgive and be forgiven. Even at a larger level in the world around us, forgiveness must sow the seeds of healing and peace. Why does the violence continue for generation after generation in places like the Middle East? Why do Palestinian and Jew go on hating and fighting each other from age to age? from the oldest citizen to the youngest child. It's because neither side can forgive. Neither side can let go of the past. In fact, both sides feed on past transgressions and teach their children to eat that bitter food. They glorify the memory of every abuse. They commemorate the anniversary of every injustice. So the past becomes prologue to their future. And on and on it goes, and where it will stop, only God knows. There is a better way. There is a way to break through this cycle of bitterness and regret. It is the way of forgiveness, as taught and demonstrated by our Lord, who lived and died for the forgiveness of sins. Everyone who thirsts for forgiveness, come to Christ's table and drink the cup of blessing. You who have no money, you who have no moral capital with which to buy your pardon, come and eat this bread of life. Come and taste God's forgiveness given freely to every humble spirit and contrite heart. I know people whose broken hearts could be healed in an instant if they would only accept the forgiveness God has already given them. I know people whose bitter spirits could be healed right now if they would only forgive, even as they have been forgiven. God offers this gift of forgiveness and healing freely, no strings attached. Yet so many of us turn it down and walk away. Some do it because they feel they don't deserve it. They live in misery because they think their transgressions are so great that no one, not even God, can forgive them. But these are the very people Jesus loves the most, the ones who feel they are the most unloved, then there are people who will agree that they are worthy of God's forgiveness, but it's the other person over there who isn't worthy. He's never been much of a Christian, they say, or she hasn't really repented and changed her ways, so why should I forgive her? Fortunately, God's mercy is bigger than our hearts can feel. His forgiveness runs deeper than our minds can imagine. 
Fortunately, God pays no attention to the ways that we try to limit his love. And he forgives anyway. Even though I have never met any of you before, I know enough about the human condition to know that there are people in this church and watching at home today that need to leave their sorrow with God and feel forgiveness. There are people who need to give their hurt away and learn to forgive. So let us pray that the forgiveness we seek in our hearts may flow like a mighty flood through this world and that all God's children can be free at last, forgiven and healed by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God for his forgiveness. That we may be open to the presence of Christ and treat others with understanding and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord that God will be our guide and our strength as we put aside our anger and ask Jesus to help us reconcile with those who have hurt us, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ will remove our own sins and give us hearts of compassion to reach out to those who are hurt, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ may strengthen those whose intentions we pray for in this Mass and pour out his grace to all in our television community who need his help, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all of those who are in need of forgiveness may experience the healing power that comes from our loving Savior, we pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, help us to forgive others as you forgive us, so that we may be worthy of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through to the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we have received the gifts we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with the angels and saints we praise you, 
as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross, and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer of St. Francis? Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. In the summer months, everything slows down a little, including our mail. Everything that is except our expenses in broadcasting the daily Mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they say the same. So do keep us in mind, and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep Daily Mass on television. It's others and wonders worthy of the name they bore. We with joyful praise and